I don't like no, this. No, nope. No. I don't like that. Not one bit. This ain't even analog horror. This uh, is a game show. Analog horror bores me. And you want to know why? Because it's the same thing every single time. It'll be like public service announcement. Your mom smells like eggs. I'm sick of it. Not everything needs to seem like it's out of a Cardi safety trading video. People take advantage of the poor quality that analog horror thrives on and spits out the same piece of content I watched last week. YouTube has millions of videos. What's the odds I watch the same one twice? Pretty fucking high, apparently. You're lucky I love you guys, because I got a treat. Allow me to show you three pieces of analog horror that I found to be well-made, original, and at times, somewhat terrifying. I believe these pieces of media to showcase unique ways to utilize the analog horror medium to deliver a high-quality addition to the genre. From fairy tales gone wrong to some weird things happening at the Red Lobster. Let's take a look at three analog horror videos that I found terrifying. But before we begin, I want to take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, Scentbird. See, I enjoy class. And if there's one thing more scary than these videos, it's not smelling good. That's why when Scentbird told me they wanted to send me three delectable fragrances, how could I say no? See, no one flavor owns one man. That's why Scentbird offers a subscription-based service that sends a catalog of diverse and appealing scents to your front door for just $17 a month. From perfumes to colognes, Prada to Gucci, Scentbird allows all fragrance aficionados and beginners a chance to find their scent. Just look at this level of respect. Each of my scents were delivered in their own divine packaging. Each cologne came with a custom bottle that unlocks a whole month's supply of fragrance. Try out the scent, and if it's for you, go for the whole bottle. Simply twist to unlock the bottle and spray. Each fragrance also comes with a card that displays interesting information about the scent, including similar fragrances and ingredients. Use my coupon code PIXELS55 for 55% off at Scentbird. This makes it just a little over $7 for your first month to try it out. This is available in both the USA and Canada. Here, look, let me show you. Let's take a look at what I received this month. Here is Mercedes-Benz, sign your attitude. It's described as having a more of a ginger and nutmeg smell, so let's take a look. Oh, that smells good. Oh, that smells nice. It smells like a bar soap, man. I don't even, I don't even gonna take showers now at this point. Up next, we have Versace's Euros, and it's described as having a green apple and mint scent. Oh, okay. So, so it is described on here. I only mentioned a few, but it does mention that it's a lemon scent, and I definitely picked that up from this. I saved my favorite for last. It's actually one of their best sellers. Confessions of a Rebel. Get a room and order champagne. That's why this one's going right on the collar. Oh my god, I'm falling in love with myself already. Thank you, Semper, for the sponsorship, and check out all the links below. Once upon a star, there lived a boy named Kalen. The Kid in the Camera is a short horror film that takes place in a children's television program known as Star O'Clock Stories. And the production quality of this is just remarkable. The narrator has a deep but soothing voice and you can find a watermark for the broadcasting company on the bottom. And the entire show uses this claymation-like animation style that truly makes you feel like you're watching a children's program from the 90s. The story follows a boy who is fascinated by a new camera he received as a gift. He would take dozens and dozens of photos until one day an unfortunate fall left the camera broken and barely usable. He laid wide awake one night thinking about his camera until he heard a knock at his window. And there stood on the other side of Kalen's bedroom window. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck this guy? This bug, I guess, is actually a sleep fairy that goes by the name the Kips need. He claims that he jumps from home to home and helps little children who are having trouble sleeping. The boy is nervous at first as his parents told him to beware of strangers, however the Kips need assures him by saying the boy's name. I'm no stranger. I know all the girls and boys around the globe. I know their parents, their homes, their names. Why? I even know your name, Kayla. Trust is formed between the boy and the Kipsneed, and the boy begins to explain his problem. The Kipsneed claims that he has a portal in his home that leads to a factory that can fix the boy's camera. Why don't I get this camera fixed for you? 
Perhaps that would help you sleep easier. You could do that? Of course, and I know just the place. A factory in my homeworld. I'll lead you to the portal. Just follow my voice. He tells the boy to follow the kips need into the woods and to follow his voice to find the portal. The boy says okay and begins to walk through the forest, making sure to snap photos along the way with his broken camera. Each photo is somewhat distorted, but this is probably one of the best aspects of the story. Each photo depicts a real life image. This analog cartoon is simply a vessel to explain a real life story. Once you realize this, it's not long before you wonder what the hell the Kips need is. Could it be a real life monster or maybe just a figment of the child's imagination? From here, the video changes entirely. With almost no sound, we get a slideshow of what images the boy took once he entered the home. The Kip's Need is... real? Up until this point, I was thinking the Kip's Need was an imaginary friend. It's clearly not a creature of the real world, but it also looks too goofy and unrealistic to be some Nordic mythical creature. At this point, I'm at the edge of my seat waiting for some conclusion. New photos flicker one by one, and I'm waiting for the final image to scare me like a jump scare. However, with the final moment showing the boy searching the basement for the Kip's Need, we get this conclusive shot. Some weeks later, authorities discovered the basement. The rest of the boy was never found. The Kip's knee turned out to be a human after all and lured the boy into his house for what I would imagine to be a murder. Leaving behind only his feet, the video used an analog style as a method of depicting a story of child abduction and the terrifying uncertainties that often follow with it. See, now that's how you do analog horror. Up until the very last second, I had no idea what was going to happen. Without using cheap scares or overdone cliches, the kid with the camera managed to keep me on the edge of my seat up until the very end. I had goosebumps on my neck. shrimp at red lobster for a limited time enjoy 30 shrimp for just 10.99 if this video gets taken down this is going to be the reason why it is very hard to find the full version of this video i believe it has something to do with the red lobster not liking this video which you're going to see why in a second however i'm going to do my best to explain the video the best i can while still staying under fair use because i believe this video to be an excellent example of good analog horror the video begins as a typical old school Red Lobster commercial advertising their latest deal of 30 shrimp for $10.99. The waiter says, great choice, and the commercial continues in a normal VHS style fashion. The commercial cuts and then starts again from the beginning. Wow, that's a lot of shrimp. Everything's the same, except the woman who ordered the shrimp has a confused look on her face. 30 shrimp, please. The commercial ends and once again starts at the beginning. This continues to happen over and over with the woman becoming more conscious of the situation. Do I say 30 shrimp, please? Great choice. It seems like she's the only one that's aware that something is off and realizing that this scenario is looping over and over again. Eventually, she tries to challenge the commercial by refusing to say her lines, but this choice doesn't go too well, huh? I... Hey. Hey! At Red Lobster. She gets fucking backhanded and gets dosed in boiling oil until her skin burns off her face. 
I don't even know if I could show this. I'm not going to. I'm not, I'm not going to get striked. Eventually, the commercial resets, and she's stuck in the same nightmare she was before. This woman is experiencing a groundhog-like day, except she doesn't reset the day, she resets the commercial once it ends. This is great analog horror, because it's not the crappy VHS quality that makes it scary, it's what's going on inside of it. The analog style is simply a vessel to explain this whole other horror-related story. I am so positive that I can't show this part, but the woman proceeds to catch the waiter off guard, break <laughs> grab a knife, and literally cut his tongue out of his mouth. And kids get shrimp. With our famous fly shrimp, Suckle Sam Mam Mam, Evan Tub Tub, My recovery, living, and enjoying. The woman then runs out of the room and straight into an AA meeting. This isn't just some cursed commercial or a too many cook scenario. This VHS style Red Lobster commercial is a representation of this woman's addiction, how each day feels like some nightmare on loot that she struggles to escape. Her mind just keeps telling her to continue that old lifestyle and say her lines. It isn't until she silences those voices that she's able to escape. However, in some suspecting freedom, the thought is always lurking, right outside the window. Great Choice surely was something new to the analog horror genre, and I'm glad I watched it. It was entertaining, horrifying, and in the end had an overall deeper meaning. I guess you could say that Great Choice was a... Great Choice. While I'm confident in saying that this project is probably my least favorite of the three, Doors certainly stuck with me the longest. Doors thrives in horror by featuring common household locations and objects, while utilizing the poor analog horror quality and lighting to make the house featured in the video feel similar to your own. This video is very PSA-like, which seems to be the case for many analog horror projects, however this video warns users of a dangerous entity lurking within your home. The video instructs viewers to go around their home and count the doors. We then see a series of doors from the house featured, all of them seemingly normal. We are then told that a new door has been added, however we should never go looking for it. We then see two individuals, of which I believe to be the occupants of this house, ignore the advice and go searching for the door. The first individual is Jonathan, who goes searching for the door, however is unsuccessful. The video states that while searching for the door, it's common to become lost and unfamiliar with your surroundings. This is why when we find Jonathan standing still on a staircase, he's not really sure where to go slowly looking around like he has no idea where he is. He eventually gets absorbed by a shadow-like creature and the scene cuts away. We then meet Audrey, who is actually successful in finding the door. Something is knocking from the other side and as most idiots in horror films do, she opens the door. The same shadow figure closes the door and meets Audrey with some unknowing fate. We then cut back to a video of the door, except now someone opens it. It's Audrey, clearly not herself anymore, staring directly into the camera. I feel kind of hypocritical recommending this one as it's very cliche to the analog horror genre. But I don't know, something about it was just so terrifying. As mentioned before, I think it has to do with the house looking just so generic. Like I can look over at my door over there and wonder if a woman's gonna walk through with just this 
rippling, horrifying smile on her face. Laying in bed at night, it's really easy just to look over at the door, picture that woman walking through and watching you as you sleep. And I'm not talking sexually. That's, uh, that's, that's something else. Thank you so much, everybody. This has been Analog Horror That I Find Terrifying. Once again, I want to give a big thank you to Semper for sponsoring this video. Check the description for useful links and coupon codes to get started with Scentbird today.